So we've already named the symptoms of the canker worm, and we've identified the worm as being unresolved conflict, right? So, uh, you know, resolving the conflict as we look at it has really been the problem the whole time. When we look up at a, at a couple who's been married for 36 years, or as we said, we've gotten as high as 56 years in divorce, uh, what we found out was was that the problem was was all of the issues that we never brought to a head, all of the issues that I just feel like you never heard me. You were you just we just never could get together truly get together where I really felt like I had 100 percent of your support, whether you agreed with me or not, uh, whether you believed what I believed or not, you believed and loved me enough. To at least stand with me. And we're not talking about, well, I expect you to stand with me in my foolishness. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about, uh, uh, we didn't say drug abuse. Remember, I said, I don't, all of those things, we didn't, never even mentioned those things. Because if you are a dope fiend, a drug addict, alcoholic, and you wrecking cars and beating your wife and doing all of this kind of crazy stuff, you know, that's not a canker worm. That's not something that's going on in the background that you can't, you don't even suspect. Everybody see the end of your marriage coming, okay? So we're we talking about stuff that people will look up and say, wow, they got a divorce? Why? Nobody could see it. So we're not talking about, well, yeah, he was, boy, he was a rolling stone. He was out there. He was everywhere, boy. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about, well, she was loose. We're not talking about, well, he was on drugs. We're not talking about, yeah, he used to beat her all the time. We're not talking about the things that would be obvious as to why a divorce comes. We're talking about the things, the thing that's eating on the inside of a marriage and nobody sees it. And we've been able to identify that what the problem is is all of these unresolved conflicts. All of these unresolved conflicts. Now we have resolved that we're going to be together. We have resolved that marriage is the answer. We have resolved that fidelity is important, right? Mm -hmm. You say unresolved conflict. Are you in relationship to the marriage or are you going beyond the marriage? Well, or I'm talking about all of them, yes. Okay. I'm talking about because, see, we did bring that point up that some of the conflicts, uh, one conflict I will share right now while you bring that up, which the question was, was are we talking about just the conflicts between the husband and his wife? Or are we talking about conflicts that existed before the man became a husband or the woman became a wife? Right. Well, I had a conflict in my life before I became a husband. And I've given this testimony before as it relates to marriage. There was a time when I was leaving for work. And this is what really opened my eyes up to this. I was getting ready to leave for work, and I was looking for my pager. It was time for me to scramble out the house. I grabbed my pager. You know, this was a time when, you know, there wasn't no cell phones. I don't think. I think you had to be rich to have a cell phone. But I, I grabbed my pager, and I was on my way out the house, and my wife stopped me and said, Are you going to get your clip? You know, the clip. You know, the pager goes inside the clip. You put that on you. And that just boiled my blood. And so I had enough knowledge in the Lord to know that the first thing that comes to mind usually ain't the safest thing to say when you're upset. OK, so I didn't say anything. I just turned around and I walked out the house. Now, I'm sure she may have wondered, you know, why I didn't say goodbye or yes or no or something. But I just turned around and left. Well, when I got out of the house, I realized by the power of the Holy Ghost, wasn't nothing wrong with what she just asked me. So I said, now, Lord, what is the reason that that made me so angry? Because I'm telling you, literally, that question had me walk out the house and I was like, I'm done with her. I'm going to leave her. But as soon as I said, Lord, what was that? I heard, you lose everything. You don't keep up with nothing. You will lose your head if it wasn't attached to your shoulder. Bah, 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 bah. It was a conflict that was already unresolved in me. It was something going on inside of me that was wounded. And those words just rubbed across that wound and opened it right back up again. And I was hurt all over to the point where I was ready to leave her. 
So I do want to make it clear that when I say unresolved conflicts, it's not just the arguments we've had. See, because a lot of the arguments that we've had didn't just stem from what she did. A lot of the ways that my wife have had in the past weren't just ways that I despise because just because of her. Because really what I found out over time was some of her ways were the best ways for her to actually be. But they just reminded me of somebody else. Somebody that hurt me or somebody I despised. You know, it could I've had some things that just reminded me of an old relationship. OK, so, yes, I'm glad you brought that to our attention. So that is th this is what we're getting to. Whatever the conflict is, you know, and that's why I said I only chose seven. Because if I said if I wanted to try to go into all the issues I had, <laughs> this would not be a three day revival. Just, and I'm talking about just me. We would have to go for months for me to express to you all the issues I had. Just me. And now my wife, of course, had a bunch of issues, too. But the, the, uh, the, the, the thing is, is not to try to get into all of the different issues. I just touched on a few that I know that will help a person to see, yeah, we got, yeah, that's me right there. That's me, too. And to help people to see that there is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. So you're not going through something and you're in this little isolated world and nobody knows how you feel but you. No. The Bible says if you're having a problem looking at women, there's another man out there that's having a problem looking at women. If you feel like hitting your wife, there's another man out there that feel like hitting his wife. If you feel like cheating on your husband, there's another woman out there that feel like cheating on her husband. There's somebody out there that feels the same way you do. So I feel it necessary thanking God that he has delivered me from the shame of my sin and my past that I can tell you this is how much of a vagabond I was. Okay? You need to know that I was not worth being called a husband, let alone being loved by my wife. You need to know that. I had a bunch of shameful and hurtful habits, attitudes, and behaviors that were just it's, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame. But and those were a lot of my issues that I brought into the marriage. And then now. So then we get married and you have the children and you have the house and you have the car, you have the jobs, you have the friends, you have all of this other stuff that just brings up a whole new world of issues surrounding the issues that you already have and the issues she already have. And you got to you got to uh, you got a lot of issues. You got a pot that's set on fire that you need Jesus Christ to show you where the release valve on that for it blows and nobody eats tonight <laughs> because the food just blew up over all over everything. So but he does have the power to show you that release valve, okay? So what we're doing tonight is we we've identified enough. Wouldn't y'all say that enough has been exposed by the Holy Spirit and all of us to say that man, I can see that. I can see that. I can see, yeah, yep, I got issues. I got issues. And I can see I've been holding things against you. Yep, yep, and that's not right. right. That's not right. right. Right? And I can see why you can hold things against me. I can see that, and that's not right. right. That's not right. But you know what? Just saying that I can see why I got something to hold against you, and I can see why she got something to hold against me, that's not going to help. We've got to come to a resolve. OK, so this is we're getting ready to kick, take this canker worm's head off first and then we're going to pour salt on them and then we're going to drag them out in the light and let them dry up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought y'all would like that idea. We're going to pour salt on it. Watch him curl up. <laughs> and we're going to pull him out into the light on the concrete, on the rock. <laughs> And watch him shrivel up to nothing. Right. And then we're going to say, nah, Satan. Right. As we look each other in the eyes and say, you're all I need. Amen. <laughs> you're the only woman for me. 
So that's where we headed. So we have got to come to a resolve, first of all, and, and this should be pretty brief. So in approaching, taking the head off this canker worm, pouring salt off him, dragging him out into the light, there are resolves that we have to come to. Number one, I know it's going to sound simple, but simple ain't always easy. Number one is forgiveness. It's forgiveness. That's where we have to start. You're going to have to ask God for the grace to release your husband or your wife. I mean, truly, yeah. truly. It's a work. It's a work. Especially if, if it's forgiving them for a habit that they have. And they're fighting to try to break this habit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But this is how we have to look at these habits. If the habit is not bringing harm to your body, harm to your children and sometimes you know you can feel like well it is harming the children you know we got this confusion and all well you know what your children gonna get hurt either way go your children are gonna get hurt whether it's on the playground by a teacher whether it's at church and Sunday school somebody gonna do something or say something to them the world is gonna hurt your children anyway okay so let's stop saying well it's for the children no for the children you better stay together okay because I tell you what, they did a poll and they asked children, would you rather your parents have just divorced? They said, no, we would rather them just stay together and fought. So they said they would rather have two parents fighting all the time than to be twisted and tossed to and fro. Don't know where they're going to stay with their mama, what's going to happen. What's happening to my daddy? I don't know. At least if they fighting, at least they still here. And maybe I can't sleep at night. And maybe I'm afraid that something bad might happen, but at least they're together. So it's a work when somebody is doing something that, that, that's habitually happening. And you, and you feel like it's bringing harm to you. You still got to forgive. So you got to come to a resolve. So, and I'm going to tell you just like this. In looking at this, I want you to know that these challenges are essentially going to drive you as they have driven me to the feet of Jesus Christ. Because I know if somebody's going to get this done in me, if it's going to be forgiveness, I'm going to need Jesus. Right? I need the Lord Jesus Christ because see, you know, she did that last week five times and now here we go again. But I'm going to tell you something. Forgiveness gives life. It gives life. Think about it. The life of the world is through the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. The life of our marriage is through forgiveness. It starts there. So if you can look at it that way, not just I'm letting him go, I'm letting her go for the 90th time. And I'm tired of being, I feel like I'm just a rug and getting walked on. If I can look at that, it's, this is where life begins. Through forgiveness. Forgiveness is the life. Life comes through forgiveness. I want you to remember that Jesus was not afraid to touch Judas. And not only did he touch him, he touched his feet. The feet that had took him to those that would kill him. The feet that took him to chase the dollars that eventually would sell him out. The feet that stood in his face and lied to him. He touched those feet when he was the one walking on the feet that brought the good news. He washed the feet, the one to the other one that was bringing bad, bad news. So if you could just look at, I'm not afraid to touch this man or this woman. I'm not afraid to, to go to the place where she lied to me, where she left me, where she embarrassed me, where she cussed me out. I'm not afraid to touch this. I'm going to forgive her. And I'm not afraid of what she's done anymore. I'm not going to let that be 
the source of 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 causing my life to drain out of me, I'm going to be a source of life to flow into her by forgiving her. Jesus was not afraid. See, this, what I'm talking about now, it's going to take Jesus. And you cannot be afraid. You can't be afraid to forgive because if I for, if you forgive, it's just going to happen again. Forget about if it's going to happen again. Forget about that. Forget about how many times it's happened. Right now, forgiveness needs to take place. It's going to take a stern work. It's, it's, a, it's a work. It's a work. Going into this, you got to have a predetermination to have it all in your marriage. Yeah, this is the third thing I'm mentioning as far. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're right. That is two. You got to have a predetermination to have it all. Remember, I said that on Monday night, how much of a shame it would be for Jesus to have died for us to have so much, for us to enjoy so little. For him to have taken the crown of thorns, which represents the cares of this life, all the cares in our marriage. You say, I'm going to wear those. Everything you care about, I will let it be pressed and cause my blood to be shed for that. Just come to me. So you got to have a predetermination that no matter what, you're going to have it all. And when I say these things, these are predeterminations that you and your spouse have to have together. You got to drop your differences. You got to drop everything. So forgive, right? You, that means you got to drop everything. And then join hands and say, we're going to do this. See, there's a work in itself right there because it's like the hand you, you're supposed to be grabbing. You want to <laughs> twist it off. I mean, we know this is real, y'all. You know it gets like that. Let's stop lying. And talk about the truth, how violent we be in our hearts sometimes. Yes, yes. That's the truth. Yes. We get angry. We get yes. frustrated. We want to push. We want to kick. We want to break stuff. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm not getting ready to give a pretty message now. This is, this is what's real. Amen. There have been times when I wanted to hurt my wife. Yes. I'm not getting ready to lie. That's how I got free. So you got to drop everything and have a predetermination that, you know what, honey? And I'm telling you, even you could you could start on this today and you can say, OK, OK, yeah, he right. He right. That's exactly what we need to do. And by tomorrow morning, you lay in the bed and say, but, you know, and then the devil come, you know, but yeah, but you still ain't got this thing right here together. And, you know, and look, at he doing it again right now. Who's that? I'm telling you. If it takes starting again in the morning, start again. A predetermination to have it all. These things that I'm telling you also, they're going to reveal character. They're going to reveal your character. I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you all a little bit about what was show, what showed up <laughs> in Brother Aaron. <laughs> when I started putting these things to practice. You find out, boy, you got some fake ways, you got some evil ways, you got some manipulating ways, you'll find out. But I'm telling you, these are things that you got to set, you got to establish it and say, this is what must take place and this is what we're going to do, period. Okay? You got to know, understand that the task, this is number three, understand that the task that you are undertaking, that you're getting ready to undergo, is incredibly difficult. But God is on our side. It is incredibly difficult, y'all. This is not a six-week progress. This ain't. This is not a six-week process. I'm telling y'all, and it may not even be a six-year process. This is this is a process. It's gonna take some time, and it depends on the depth and the intensity of some of your trials. It depends on how long you've been together. If you didn't got a bl blended family, all of that stuff. So. It just depends. So I can't tell you, yeah, if you start these things by 
the end of next year, I'm not getting ready to lie to you now, because I'm telling you, it took years, years for me and my wife to resolve the conflicts that we hadn't resolved <laughs> and then come up with a clear cut path of how we're going to resolve the ones to come. Because they're not going to stop coming just because you decided to resolve the ones that's gone. They're still coming. Okay? And while you're resolving the ones, they're still coming. The world is not getting ready to stop while you and your spouse are trying to resolve your conflicts. <laughs> because NICOR is still going to be sending out them letters. <laughs> Comment. Huh? It's still coming. The gas going to go up and down and all of that stuff. And the children still going to be calling, Daddy, I'm in trouble. And, and all of this kind of stuff. And you still got to work out the disagreements you had about how we were supposed to be raising him or her in the first place. And all that stuff. But you got to go there. You got to go there. If you're going to get this, you're going to have to go there. So now, here we are killing the worm. Killing the worm. First thing, and I'm saying these are mindsets. These are positions that I believe that we have to take to kill this worm. Okay? Because if we look at what the unresolved conflict is, the conflict is going on between us and it's all in our head. It's things that were said, you know, unforgiveness. That's all in our head. You know, because you can forgive and all of this stuff is all going in our head. So it's something that's got to be renewed in my mind in order for this to take place. Something has to be new. Now if we think about it. All that we did to Jesus. huh? Saying we knew him. Saying we loved him. But we went right on and did all kind of hideous things. Something in his mind. Allowed him to die anyway. Right? Now that's what we need. Some, we need that mind. The mind of Christ. Okay. So something's got to take place in our mind. For this to begin. For us to kill this worm. OK, something's got to take place. Number one on my list is we got to square up shoulder to shoulder, feet about shoulders width apart. Face your spouse. Look them square in the eye and say, this is our marriage. It's our marriage. I cannot. Have the feelings of walking away from my wife saying it was my wife's fault. If your marriage fails, it's your fault. It's, it's no excuse. Except it be for adultery. Now that's why I say divorce. Now, violence and drug abuse, we might have to have a separation and some rehabilitation, but you can still work that out, right? But except it be for those things, if your marriage fails, it's your fault. It's your fault. You got, we got to look each other in the face and say, if this fails, it's because of us. It's because of us. I mean, truly resolve that this is our marriage. This is ours. Your issues are my issues. And my issues are your issues. Because this is our marriage. This is our life. I'm telling y'all, this is a work, y'all. See, I'm talking about doing some work now, ain't it, Sister Pam? Yes. Y'all agree? We talking about doing some work now, right? Because when you do that, do you know that you're putting the worm on notice? Oh, yeah, digging deeper. Oh, he finna get mad now. Hold up. They just agreed. <laughs> That they have something that I've been in control of the whole time. I've been keeping them on my little strings, dangling them about, causing them to go to and fro, tossed with every wave of the sea. Every time the word, the road changed, they changed right with it. They don't have nothing going on straight. And they just declared that they have what? They say that this marriage is theirs. Be on alert. Be on alert. You got to resolve that God is going to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. This mindset, God will hold us accountable. 
Now, I can stand up here and say it's my wife, and she can stand up here and say it's me. But you know what? In, in the end, God is going to hold us accountable. There will be no excuse. Now, you imagine trying to explain to Jesus Christ why you broke your covenant, but he never broke his. Because he can bring Pilate. He can bring Judas. He can bring all the disciples that ran off and left. Right? Huh? He can bring the people that plucked the, the hairs out of his beard. That beat blood out of him. That put a bag over his head and hit him with sticks. He can bring a whole lot of people and say, wait, 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 wait hold up, hold up now. He could bring me. <laughs> Amen. Right? And say, now, these are all the reasons that I could have broke my covenant. What is yours? Okay, God will hold us accountable. I don't know what number this is, but this is the next one. And this is a tough one. Truthfully, wholeheartedly, honestly, conclude what you really believe about each other. I used to ask Pam this question all the time because God would always ask me, and I ain't never told you this. (laughs) But God would always ask me this question about my wife. What kind of woman you really think she is? And I just started watching her. And I would say, man, that's a good woman. I got a good woman. You know, because, see, I could try to hold all my stuff up to God and say, well, you know, what about this and what about that? But he would always just thwart that, you know. So I learned just don't even try to take him that, you know, just be real. What kind of woman do you think you have? I really have a good woman. And I could say, well, she got these issues, but God would always defend her because every issue of hers that I would bring, he would bring me at least five of mine for each one of hers. Right. (laughs) And all five of them will be 10 times worse than the one I'm trying to bring to him. So I would start I started asking her, honey, what kind of guy I I just use what he used on me. (laughs) What kind of guy do you really think I am? You know, do you really think that when I said that, that I was intentionally trying to hurt you? Because that's the kind of thing I had to go through when she would say certain things. You know, I would say, you just saying that, trying to hurt me, you know, or you trying to belittle me. And and it would be like, no, that's not the kind of. Now, sometimes, you know, we were both mean, you know, and, and it was really that way. But I'm talking about when we started working on trying to get things right. I would ask her, do you really think that that my intention is to offend you? By telling you the truth that I don't like this or I don't like that or when this happened, I wish we really I was just trying to work things out. So you have to conclude honestly what you really believe about each other. Okay. now we've said this is our marriage. Right. And you we've said that we're going to have all that God has for us. Right. We said that we've said that. We know God is going to hold us accountable. We've said that we know that if our marriage fails, it's our fault. Now, if you have concluded all of this stuff, here's the next thing. And this is going to take a long time. And I'm telling you, this one here is going to bring up some old stuff and some hurting feelings and all of that. But I'm telling you, if you go back and get them, it'll be a blessing. Commit to resolve old issues. I don't care if it go all the way back to when your first baby was born, what happened in the waiting room. And you just never got over it. And she never understood me. You never listened to me in that issue. We never saw eye to eye. I'm telling you, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's that canker worm. And things just get added on to that. But if you go back, and I'm going to tell you, it is not easy, y'all. When me and Pam started going back over the old stuff, man, we had some new fights. Some new arguments. Some new falling out. Some new judgments and everything. But we said, this is what we got to do. And we would start. 
And then that stemmed in us saying, well, what, wait, wait, wait a minute now. We know we got to do this, but it's not working this way. Because what it did was reveal some old habits that we had, like the way we communicated to each other. You know, the sarcasm, the ridicule, the belittlement, the degradation, and, and you know, and the cursing, and all of this stuff. And it's like, you know what? We're going to have to make some rules of engagement. So then we made the rules of engagement, and then we saw what phonies we were. <laughs> You know, all that stuff look good on paper, right? But when you get mad and you want to hold that contract up, it's like, get that out of my face. <laughs> I'm mad right now. I don't want to hear nothing about no contract. <laughs> See, it reveals character. So now when one person is going to be the bigger person and say, oh, we're not honoring the contract. Well, I'm going to honor the contract. Somebody's got to stand up. See, remember when I said that? If it ain't going right, somebody is being selfish. Somebody is being unfaithful. And the Bible says confidence in an unfaithful man is like a, a tooth that just got broke off in a foot out of joint. Mm -hmm. You saying go back and, and rehash the, the conflict? Yes. But the problem I have with that is. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. Is this on? <laughs> the, the problem that I have with that is that um, I can understand recognizing when a person said, you did this to me, but when you're talking about going back to well, I have years, that means the other person has to remember uh, what the other person said he or she did. And I think that's difficult to do because it, if it's a conflict, it's a conflict because the other person had an issue with it, not the person who they had a conflict with. And, and to me, that kind of just builds up and brings up even more stuff that w w wasn't there initially because it's, it's almost like you're attacking the person. But I can understand if you recognize it, I, I didn't like it when you did this. Or it's almost like using uh, like a you statement, you did this to me, you did this to me. And just kind of getting it out. I can understand that process, but they kind of go, go by and deep and bring out stuff that somebody else remember that that the other person didn't. And say, well, I don't know. I can't. I can't. You know, I don't know because I don't remember. Or <laughs> I think the best thing to do in that case is tell the person you're sorry. You're sorry you don't remember that. And if I hurt you during that time, I'm sorry. Forgive me for that. Because a lot of times that's what the person wants. They're looking for resolve. They're looking for that time that you never even acknowledge it, nor it never even said sorry. So, you know, our attention spans and things now are a little different. And, you know, some of us can't go way back. But, you know, when you're hurt, those wounds don't never close. So, you know, it's hard. That person will remember. But the reason why I say that, I'm going to interrupt, because mm -hmm. I know when, when, when my father passed when I was young, mm -hmm. when, my, when I first had when my father passed when I was young, when I had my first child, mm -hmm. I had to go back to the things that he did to me to resolve that. Of course, he wasn't there. So I just kind of forgave him, even though I understood that he was just, he was just doing what he thought he needed to do to raise me, even though he wasn't there physically. But the fact that I acknowledge it, you know, I forgive you. I understood why you did this, why you had to do that. But but to go back and, because that just, to me, just brings up. So, but that's the same thing. Yeah. Right. In, in not remembering. You still, even though he wasn't there to defend himself, you still understood and you were able to forgive him, even though he could not come back to right. you and right. physically right. say what right. he needed to say. Right. There yeah, was resolved. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's on a different level than going back and going back to old memories. Because I'm the kind of person, you know, if it happened in the past, it's, I can understand how you might feel, but I'm not going to go back and argue with the point that you had the issue with. Because it was your resolve. issue. Hold up, hold up. The new resolve is no argument. Listen, listen. This is exactly why I'm saying it's going to be hard. But you know what? There's no issue in my wife and I's past that anybody can bring up that we're not absolutely clear on now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. 
the canker worm has nothing because we went back and we settled everything. And yes, it was hard. It was real hard, but we got to the point where even if we still didn't agree, this was the trick right here. This was the real hard part was I had to get to the point that even if I did not agree with my wife, I had to love her enough to embrace how she felt and let it be justified for her. And if that's how you felt, you know what? Just like she said, I'm sorry I did that. And sometimes I might not. I didn't see. Why did you feel that way? But the thing was, was I wanted enough for her to feel like, oh, you just you just appeasing me by saying you're right. You just appeasing me by saying you understand what she really needed was for me to really get into her world enough to know that I have embraced her in that conflict, that we have resolved this issue. And that's I'm telling you, that is what's necessary. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard. It's hard. But I tell you what, we look forward to growing old together. And that is what I'm talking about, is truly, truly resolving these issues. So it's committing. When I say this, that's why I told y'all, this one here, this one hard. This one hard. And look, look what I got right out here, because there are ideals that we need to let go of and ideals that we need to embrace. A lot of times when we go back to these old things, it was the ideal that I was holding on to, just the way I think and the way my mama raised me and the way I am as a man and the way you ought to be as a woman and all these different ideals surrounding why I held what I held or did what I did or said what I said or whatever. And when I go back, I got to let all that go because now this ain't about my ideals. This ain't about my passions, my goals, my dreams, and the way I was raised no more. This is about me resolving this issue I had had with my wife. So that we can have all that God ordained for us to have in marriage. Everything. So we can get this canker worm out of here for good. And sometimes it took weeks for one thing. One thing. We would hit it and say, you know what, I'm tired. We even got to the point where we was like, you know what, look. When it's late, we can't do this. <laughs> we got, you know, we had to come up with a cutoff time. You know, it was like a cutoff time to stop talking, a cutoff time to start talking. It was like because it would go on and on and on and on. But we had committed to resolve. We committed to that. We looked each other in the face and we said, we are going to get this stuff out of our life. And we not only committed to getting the old stuff out, we committed that no more ever will we walk away from the issue unresolved. No matter how long it takes, we're going to resolve this issue. And you know what it taught us? It taught us about each other. It taught us things about each other that we never knew. The sweetness begins to return. You become as little children again. We said if it's not worth the peace in our home, just let it go. All right. Compromise. You got to compromise. All right. Here are. How about this? There are certain truths that we have to establish. Yes. There are certain truths that you just have to establish. And you know what? I The only thing I can tell you on this is you need to ask God what truths those are. You're going to have to come together and pray and say, Lord, there are some truths that are foundational for our marriage. There are some things that that you want us to rely on as pillars To fortify our relationship, our marriage. What are they? Well, yes. We got um, dates once a week. We got... Well, those were some actions. Okay. 
what I'm saying is like truths. Well, one truth is like if it's not worth the peace in your house, just let it go. Because we had a way of just dragging out stuff just and, and when it was all because it was a blade on this side of the line on the sidewalk instead of that side. Stupid stuff. Y'all know we do stuff like that. It just when you look when you grow up and you look back and you say, Man, that wasn't even worth fighting over. You know, we ain't talked for three weeks over that. It was just cause what no mayonnaise on the sandwich. You know I like mayonnaise. And then you find out it wasn't no mayonnaise and, and then you don't want to recant and just say, Oh, I'm sorry, because you done put yourself out there like that. <laughs> so you gotta carry on just for ego's sake and keep on fighting and arguing. Well well you should have went to the store. You say you love me, right? <laughs> we do stupid things, man. We do some stupid stuff. And you know, I thank God that he opened my eyes up to who I am. And it helped me love him more and it helped me love my wife more. I'm like, man, she she put up with this stuff all this time. And then greater than that, wow, and you put up with it for even longer, Lord. And you didn't just put up with it, you died for it. (laughs) Okay. One more thing. And this is a biggie. This is a biggie. This one is not as hard as it is tedious. Because the intricacies of your spouse's personality and all of that stuff, we really don't know all of these things. Right? But I I will give you these encouraging words. This is what God told me about my wife. Real simple. He said, I know her. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what, what, what. And he's like, I know her. I know everything about her, her mother, her grandmother, what touched them, what touched their great, great grandmother, all the way back to Eve. So what you really need to know about her, I know. Hmm. So. The purpose here is, is to purpose that your arms are going to be the safest place for her heart. Wives, you have to purpose that your arms will be the safest place for your husband's heart. Remember how we started intimacy? That's what's going to start rebuilding the intimacy. Is when I know that my heart. What does it say about the virtuous woman? And his heart does safely trust in her. I got to know that my heart is safe in her arms. And a wife needs to know that her heart is safe in my arms. And that means that no matter how frail. No matter where her feet have been. Right? No matter how she's lied, no matter what her anger has been, no matter what her issues and frailties and weaknesses are, that no matter what she does and what she knows about herself, she can come to me and say, this is what it is, honey, and and feel confident that I'm the place to bring that. I'll go talk to my husband. See, then she won't want another man. She won't be looking over the fence, looking for comfort if she knows that, oh, hey. This is the most comforting man I know. Anything I tell him, he ready to receive it. He don't make me feel bad. I already feel bad enough. See, that's what the kind of things we need to learn. A lot of times when somebody telling you something bad about them, they already feel bad. Why be waiting there to strike them down? (laughs) Usually what they need is building up. Right? See, and sometimes you're married to somebody. Because, see, now, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You could be married to somebody who don't know how to do that. But God then gave you the revelation that that's what you need to do. As sure as I'm saying this, there's a husband and a wife out there, and one is getting it and one ain't. One receiving it and one is rejecting it. Well, the one, you that receive it, do it. And don't do it saying, saying, I did that. But he, no. I did that, but she, no. Do it. 
because Jesus did it for you. Do it because God is on your side. Remember, we started this off with you got to understand that what you're getting ready to do is incredibly difficult, but God is on our side. And that means that your your house, your marriage has God on its side. And that's regardless to whether your spouse is getting what you're hearing right now or not. He's still on your side. To fortify your marriage. And build you up to make sure that you too get everything that God ordained for marriage. Last thing. Last thing. Some people out there will hear this in the days to come or even right now. And feel like, man, we just, we don't have nothing left. This is what I tell you. If you leave the canker worm unchecked in your crops... Eventually, you'll have nothing to eat and you'll starve to death. But if you kill that canker worm and there is so much as one kernel of corn left in your field, Amen. you'll live Amen. because you have God. For some of us, the kernel of corn is just listening to this. That's your kernel of corn. You're willing to at least hear for some people, that kernel of corn is just coming to sit. For some people, that kernel of corn is saying, I'm willing to forgive. You got something if you hear what I'm saying. You got at least a kernel of corn. And God said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. Amen. You take what you got and give it to God in faith. Say, Lord, you know what? I'm looking at my field. And the canker worm then ravished it. There's nothing left. You got a kernel of corn though. Because you hear what I'm saying. You have something. Let it be God's. And God will show you what to do. God will show you what to do. If you got one kernel of corn. And I'm going to tell you. Just like I told you. That this is not a six week progress. You know if you got one kernel of corn. How much corn coming up after you plant that? One stalk. <laughs> right? And then you can't eat all of that. And you'll probably be real hungry waiting on that corn to come up. Right? But you got to remember, you sowed in faith and you're getting something. And that one stalk will come up and you say, oh, whew, I was about to fall off. And you can't eat all of that. You got to save at least one ear for the seed corn. But now this year, you know, it's a little lean now. It's a little lean. You'll be a little lean for a little while. But now you got a whole row this time. Yeah. And see, now you got a little confidence because you got a, and you look up and you got a whole row of corn this year. Hey, praise God. We can eat. You get, And then you take, you know, one ear off each one of those stalks. Y'all get the picture, right? And then before you know it, you're not just eating, but you're feeding people. Amen. <laughs> And ain't that what it's about? Yeah. Starting in your house. Right. Then go to your neighbor. Go to a friend. Right. Ain't that what we want to see happen? Amen. Don't we want to see the church revived? Yeah. We always talk about reviving the church. Well, it's got to start with us, y'all. The married couple is the reviving of the church. Yeah. If we hurting, the church is hurting. It's hurting, man. So we got to have a vision of, of being the pillars of wisdom and strength and sustenance and enduration. Because we never gave up. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for this time. We give you the glory for it. We pray, Lord, over all the families that will embrace these words and trust you to do exactly what we ask you. Amen.